Yo, what's up? Dr. Swole here, MD, Pro Physique Athlete. Today I'm going to be giving you a full power building program based on the Texas Method. The Texas Method was designed as an intermediate strength building system. And it's a program that I've used with success in my earlier training years. The core training system is built around three days per week and aims to advance your lifts every week. Note that as an absolute novice, you might actually be better off with another system that allows you to progress even faster, adding weight every workout. But for someone who's a late beginner or intermediate athlete, this will be a relatively rapid rate of progression, which is gonna be good. I've integrated the Texas Method into a four day modified upper lower split that brings in some hypertrophy elements as well. So you should be able to build both muscle and strength, especially if you are a less experienced athlete. We'll start off with a program walkthrough where I share everything you'll need to know to run the program yourself, including exercises, sets, and reps. Then we'll go over the weekly setup or how I prefer to lay out the workouts across the week. Then we'll talk about the progression with the Texas method or how to add weight to your lifts over time. And finally, we'll talk about the pros and cons of this modified Texas method power building program as I've written it. All right, let's do our program walkthrough. So this is Dr. Swole's Texas Method Power Building Program. It's a low volume program built around four days per week using a modified upper lower split. We've got day one, day two, day three, and day four. Your main Texas Method days are day one, day two, and day three. The Texas Method mainly plays out in your main lifts on day one, day two, and day three. We'll talk about the progression of these lifts later in the video. Here are your exercises and there are the sets and reps. Down here we have the total number of sets for each workout so you have an idea of workout length. And here we have our total weekly set volumes for each muscle group. As a broad overview, the Texas Method is built around three main days where you hit your main lifts. Day one and day three are meant to be volume days. That is on your main lifts, bench press and squat. You're gonna be doing relatively more sets with less weight. And on day three, you're gonna go for an intensity day where you try and hit a new five rep max on each of your main lifts. The idea is that you get the stimulus from your higher volume on day one, then you recover and adapt, and then you're able to realize those new gains with a new PR on day three. Let's start off with day one. We have bench press and we're doing five sets of five. After that, we have squat, also five sets of five. And note that these are your work sets, so after warming up. I'm counting the bench press for chest and squats for quads. Then we have RDLs for the glutes and hamstrings, three sets of six to 10. I really like this as a deadlift accessory, which also is great for hypertrophy. The Romanian deadlift actually tends to have a better stimulus to fatigue ratio than your deadlift itself. This is because you have relatively less axial loading since you're not quite using as much weight and you get a much better stretch on the hamstrings if hamstring growth is your goal. Then we have machine calf raises for the calves, three sets of 10 to 15. And finally, dumbbell lateral raises for the side delts, three sets of eight to 12. I know I said this was a modified upper lower split, but keep in mind that I said modified. I've moved some side delt work here to add more volume and frequency. Then we move on to day two and we started with the barbell overhead press, three sets of five. And this is mainly for your delts. In the original Texas method, he actually had you alternating the bench press and overhead press on days one, two, and three. But I prefer having this static setup where you're benching twice per week and overhead pressing once per week. This is because I think bench press is just an overall more important lift. Then we have close grip bench press for the chest and triceps, three sets of six to 10. Following that, barbell rows for the back, four sets of six to 10. This day one, day two, and day three setup works really well for having your main work on your big lifts come on day one and day three, and some of your accessories coming on day two. It's nice to put barbell rows here because your lower back will already be fatigued from squatting or from heavy pulling, and you'll be able to hit your close grip bench press without being fatigued from heavy benching already. Then we have cable press downs for the triceps, three sets of 10 to 15, and you can superset these with cable curls for the biceps, four sets of 10 to 15. After that, we have cable lateral raises for the side delts, three sets of 10 to 15. And note that since you're on the cable machine already, you could actually do a big tri set with these. That is, you could just alternate these three exercises. I have no problem with cycling exercises in a big tri set like this, as long as the exercises don't interfere with each other. Then we have some ab training, three tri sets here. So in a tri set, you're gonna hit three different exercises back to back, training with minimal rest, and you'll count that as one tri set. Try and make sure you choose exercises where you can actually overload over time. That is, you can add resistance. Then we have day three and we start off with bench press. As we said, day three is an intensity day. So you're going to be going for a new 5RM on each of your big three lifts. So you're going to hit your 5RM on bench press, then squat, then on deadlift. And I have the order here as written because bench press isn't going to fatigue you for your squats. But if you did squats and deadlifts first, you may not perform as well in your bench press. Finally, deadlifts tend to do better coming after squats because squatting won't affect your deadlift as much as having a
a tired back going into squats. Then we have some leg accessory work programmed for hypertrophy. So leg extensions for the quads, three sets of 10 to 15, and leg curls for the hamstrings, three sets of 10 to 15. Then we have some standing single leg calf raises that you can add weight to with a dumbbell, three sets of eight to 12. And finally, more dumbbell lateral raises for the side delts, three sets of 10 to 15. Then we have day four. So we start with weighted chin-ups for the back, four sets of six to 10. Note that with weighted chin-ups, you don't really have that axial loading component that you do with a heavy barbell row. So this is why I put weighted chin-ups, which is our main back movement of the day on this day four, which comes right after day three. Barbell rows come with that axial fatigue, so they're better on this day two, which you'll see is gonna be spread out from your days one and day three. And we'll talk about the weekly layout immediately after this. Then we have cable rows also for the back, four sets of 10 to 15. Following that barbell upright rows, which I count for the side delts, but also hit your traps, three sets of eight to 12. After this, we have easy bar skull crushers for the triceps, three sets of eight to 12. Following that, you have line curls for the biceps, two sets of six to 10. And these are like incline curls for the biceps, except you lie flat on the bench. You can actually superset these two movements if you have a bench already. After line curls, you'll have preacher curls also for the biceps, two sets of 10 to 15. And finally, we have some more ab work three triceps. Note that there are relatively more sets on days two and day four than there are on days one and day three, and this is because days two and day four are relatively easier with more upper body work. What other programs you guys want to see me cover in the following video? Let me know in the comments below. As you guys might know at this point, I am the CEO of free hypertrophy programming on YouTube, trying to put programs in the hands of the people. Okay, now that you've seen the program, let's talk about the weekly setup or my preferred layout of workouts across the week. We have day one, rest, day two, rest, day three, day four, and rest. Now this program is basically a modified upper lower split, although I have to admit heavily modified. It's built around the three main days of Texas Method, which are on day one, day two, and day three. Note that the spacing of days is important here. You really want these three main days to be spread apart by rest days. And since day one is relatively tougher than day three, you want to have more days in between day one and day three coming after day one, then coming after day three. Day two should ideally have rest days separating it from day one and day three, because you do have accessory presses on day two that you want to be separating from your main bench days on day one and day three. Finally, day four is an upper body day where we fill in with some hypertrophy work so it's fine for day four to come after day three. Now I do quite like the Texas Method 4 power building because these three main days work pretty well in a modified upper lower setup. Okay let's talk about progression using the Texas Method. The Texas Method is based around three main days in the week where we have our main lifts and our set progression scheme is mainly applying to the main lifts here so that's what we'll talk about. As a broad overview the Texas Method has you doing the squat and bench press twice per week and day one is designed to be a volume day. So you're accumulating more volume with more sets, but you're using lighter weight. Day three is an intensity day where you try to realize the adaptations that you made after recovering from day one with a new 5RM. This is basically the most compact form of periodization that is within the weekly time frame. Let's get into the progression now. So on day one, you have squat and bench press and you're gonna be doing about 80 to 9% of the weight of your 5RM. That is, you'll be using about 80 to 90% of the weight that you used on the previous day three. So note that this will be a moving number, but also note that day one is meant to be a volume day. That is, you're not chasing PRs on this day. You're really trying to accumulate the volume that is going to build the adaptations to allow you to PR on day three. So you don't necessarily need to progress this as quickly as long as you're getting in enough stimulus to progress on day three. On day two, we have overhead press, and this is a modified version of the Texas method compared to what you might see on some sources online. I think you're better off having two days of bench press to one day of overhead press each week. So you're gonna be lifting about 89% of your 5RM and you're aiming to add 2.5 pounds per week to your lift. But note that this is a relatively quick progression for overhead press. So if you're not able to add weight this quickly, that's okay. You can add weight a bit more slowly. To add that 2.5 pounds, you can either get micro plates or you can just add five pounds every other week. On day three, this is your intensity day, so you're trying to hit a new 5RM on all of your big lifts. With the squat and deadlift, you're gonna be trying to add five pounds to your lift per week. And on the bench press, you're trying to add about 2.5 pounds per week. So note the Texas method has you progressing your lifts every week. This is slightly slower than some novice programs, which will have you adding weight to your lifts every workout but it's still a relatively fast rate of progression and should work well for late beginners and intermediate lifters. Okay, now let's talk about the pros and cons of this modified Texas Method power building program. Starting off with the pros. The Texas Method is a well-designed weekly periodization setup. I think it's a great introductory example of how you would start implementing some basic forms of periodization in a weekly template. As a less advanced athlete, a weekly periodization cycle is really all you need. 
That is, you don't need to be stressing too much about longer time scales, like organizing training across an entire year setup. Next, the Texas method gives you a relatively fast rate of progression. I really like that you're able to add weight to your main lifts every week. And I think getting that new 5RM for your lifts is gonna be really motivating for a lot of trainees. Finally, this modified Texas method is compact for power building and strength development. The Texas method was initially designed for strength building. We have added in some hypertrophy work to round with the program for power building. But I'd say that this is a very efficient setup in that you're getting a lot of bang for your buck with those volume and intensity days. Building strength can be indirectly advantageous for hypertrophy, even from a pure muscle building standpoint. So those 5RMs on intensity day can be seen as useful for hypertrophy, even from a pure bodybuilding perspective. Okay, now let's talk about the cons of this Texas Method program. First of all, this program has limited exercise selection. This can be an issue from the hypertrophy perspective because you're limiting yourself and your ability to train your muscles from different angles and using different force curves. For someone more advanced, you do want some breadth of exercises within a program for each muscle group so that you can make sure that you get a complete stimulus for the muscle. Now, I will note that this isn't gonna be that big of an issue for someone who is less experienced. That is, even if your quads are really only getting hit by squats, deadlifts, and leg extensions, this could still be enough for someone who's in their early years. Now, this program could also be limited from a strength building perspective. That is, you may need a bit more accessory work, but I've wanted to make this a low volume, minimalistic type of program, so I'll let you add in more accessory work as needed. Next, with this program, you have fairly rigid scheduling. You really wanna lay out the four days as I've mentioned, and that's because you really wanna create that volume and stimulus on day one, adapt and recover from it, and then hit a new PR on day three. Since the whole progression cycle is contained within the week, you really wanna have some consistency in your scheduling. Finally, with this program, the Texas method will stall eventually. You'll see that we're adding weight at a fairly aggressive rate. It's awesome to be able to add five pounds per week to your squat and deadlift 5RMs, but at some point you're gonna stall. I'm not gonna go a lot into depth into troubleshooting stalls, but this will involve deloading, manipulating some training variables like your volume. But just keep in mind that this program is not meant to be run indefinitely. At some point, you will have to move on to a more advanced, slower progression model. That is, intermediates might be able to add five pounds to the lifts every week, but an advanced athlete won't be able to do it so quickly. Now, we'll be sharing this full program as an Excel file in my Facebook group. So if you haven't found the group already, join the group using the link in the description below and you can download the program for free. If you wanna see another power building program, check out this video where I share a full template based around the Grayskull Linear Progression program. This is another setup that I've used with success in the past and that I quite like. There's some unique advantages to that program that you won't see here. For more top-notch science-based hypertrophy programs, make sure you subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time.